news to bring And that is why I sing all my joys With you I'll share I plan to take a trip In the good old gospel ship And go sailing through Shout and sing until the heavens ring while I'm beating this world goodbye. Oh, I can scarcely wait. I know I'll not be late for I'll spend my time in prayer. And when my ship comes in, I'll leave this world of sin and go sailing through the air. Oh. day today ain't it the lord has blessed us with another beautiful day and and i appreciate that thank him for that at this time i'd like for bounding grace to come and sing make them welcome beach fork amen what an honor it is to be saved tonight Amen. What a what a joy and what a priv privilege. Ugh. What a privilege and what an honor it is to be here. And uh, hopefully, I can sing better than what I can talk. Somebody say amen right there. But uh, we're we're just so excited and so glad to be here. And I hope I hope tonight we can just have a little bit of church. Hope we can just praise Him for a little bit tonight. Amen. <laughs> I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls this church away. I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment or may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. I'm listening for a trumpet to sound most any time, and a crown of light that's waiting. Praise God will soon be mine. I've got my invitation to a place called Calvary and by the precious blood of Jesus. That trip's been paid for me, and I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. And I made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I made 
may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when he calls his church away. The captain of the vessel is calling, get on board, and the destination's heaven, safe on that crystal shore. There we'll meet again, the Savior and our loved ones who have gone. There to live for all eternity. Oh yes, we're going home. I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. And I've made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when He calls His church away. I'm going home with Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. I've made my reservation for a mansion in the sky. I may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when He calls His church away. I may not know the moment or I may not know the day, but I know that I'll be leaving when He calls His church away. In this world I've tried most everything And I'm happy now to say There's nothing like salvation In the good old fashioned way I'm walking in the old time way And I want the world to know That I'd rather be an old time Christian Than anything I know Well I'd rather be an old time Christian Than anything I know There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show I'm walking in the grand old highway Telling everywhere I go That I'd rather be an old time Christian Than anything I know All the world is bright since I got right Now I sing and praise and shout All my burdens have been lifted Since the Savior brought me out And I will tell the world both far and near As I travel here below That I'd rather be an old time Christian Than anything I know Well I'd rather, rather be an old time Christian Than anything I know There's nothing like an old time Christian With a Christian love to show I'm walking in the grand old highway Sailing everywhere I go That I'd rather be an old time Christian Than anything I know I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway, telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. I'm walking in the grand old highway, telling everywhere I go that I'd rather. Than anything I know. Thing I know. Well, I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. There's nothing like an old time Christian with a Christian love to show. I'm walking in the grand old highway, telling everywhere I go that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. I'm walking in the grand old highway Telling everywhere I go That I'd rather be an old time Christian Everything I think I know The cares of this old world seem to keep you down Child, look up to heaven 
heaven's throne won't be very long the god will deliver you and you can sing this song will my god deliver me heard me while on my knees and my god moved on the sea he set me free oh i'm gonna praise his name no i'm not ashamed and i'm standing here today because god delivered me I waited through test and trial Wondered if God above had forsaken me But that's when I heard him say It is I be not afraid Oh, what a glorious day when God delivered me My God delivered me Heard me while on my knees My God moved on the sea He set me free Oh, I'm gonna praise his name No, I'm not ashamed I'm standing here today because God delivered me. And well now my God delivered me, heard me while on my knees. And my God moved on the scene, He set me free. Oh, I'm going to praise His name, no, I'm not ashamed. I'm standing here today because God delivered me. And I'm standing here today because God delivered me. I'm living with pain One minute the sun is shining down Then it starts to rain But I know that a touch from God Will silence the thunder I'll never get over The blood that I'm under And I'll never wonder where I'll spend eternity. I realize what could have been that change at Calvary. I'll never get over the blood that I'm under. And I'm safe and secure with Him in my heart And no one can take that from me And I'm living life knowing that heaven is where I'm gonna be When He saved my soul, no longer in sin Did I wonder I'll never get over And I'll never wonder where I'll spend eternity. I realize what could have been that change at Calvary. I'll never get over the blood that I'm under. And I realize what could have been. That changed at Calvary I'll never get over The blood that I'm under The blood that I'm under I'm thankful that the writer said that it is a no-so salvation. Right. 
As my papa used to say, he would say, you know, you, know, you got to get saved until you know that 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 you are saved by the blood of the Lamb. And I, I just, something just begins to dwell in me when I begin to think about my sins, my sins that I, I, uh, I deserved, and I, I deserved to die in that sinful state. But the blood of Jesus came along. The blood of Jesus came along and covered all them sins. Uh, uh, and they're, they're cast as far, the Bible says, as the east is from the west. And I am thankful that I've been under the blood and they're, they're never to be remembered. And I don't have to remember them anymore. Why? Because I'm under the blood. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that God is faithful time and time again. You can try him again over and over and over and over. And he always comes through faithful. And I'm thankful that we serve a faithful Savior tonight. <laughs> deserts, believing I'd never get lost. I've been at the foot of a fell out Mount Everest, knowing I'd have the strength for the climb. Because through every trial and each test and temptation, one thing is sure every time that over and over Again and again, God is faithful. And over and over, again and again, through it all, He's made me able to stand and survive, to come through alive when it sure looked like I couldn't win. But Jesus is with me, so I'll play the What he says he will do And I'd simply say every battle has taught me There's nothing he won't help me through So why would I dwell on my hardships and struggles When I can look just beyond them and see that the way this will end is a great celebration and deep in my heart I believe that over and over again and again God is faithful and over and over again and again through it all He's made me So I'll play the victory over and over again To stand and survive and to come through alive When it sure looked like I couldn't win But Jesus is with me So I'll play the victory Again and again, God is faithful. And over and over, again and again, through it all, He's made me able to stand and survive and to come through alive when it sure looked like I couldn't win. 
But Jesus is with me, so I'll claim the victory over and over again. To stand and survive and to come through alive when it sure looked like I couldn't win. But Jesus is with me, so I'll claim the victory over and over again. Thank you. Hallelujah, that just felt good right there. (laughs) That through it all, he's been faithful to me. Man, I've been through some things in my, you may say you're just 18 years old. You haven't been through too much. I can tell you, you wouldn't believe the things that I've been through. I wouldn't believe the things that you've been through too. But through it all, God has still been faithful to us all. Man, I'm glad for that. Man. I'm going to be in Genesis chapter 37, starting in verse 22. And if you want to keep your Bibles open, after that I'll be turning to Genesis chapter 50. If you would like to turn there. I just want to say thank you, though, for having us out here just to be able to minister to you and to allow me just to stand before you all and get to have this opportunity to preach the word to you. It's, it truly is such a blessing just to be out here with you. And I can't thank you enough for allowing us to be with you. And it's, it's just an honor. Starting in verse 22 of Genesis 37, it says, And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver them him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brethren and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to this Ishmael to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh and his brethren were content turning to Genesis chapter number 50 we then look into verse number 18 and it says and his brethren also went and fell down before his face talking about Joseph and they said behold we be thy servants and Joseph said unto them fear not For I am in the place of God, for am I in the place of God? And here's where I'm getting the message from in chapter, verse number 20. It says, but as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass that it is this day to save much people alive. But God. This is a very familiar text that we've just gotten to dive into. We all know it very well. We've grown up hearing it all throughout church. We know that in this time that Joseph was the favorite of his father, Israel, who was also Jacob. We know that during this time, since he was his father's favorite, that he gave him this coat of many colors. And his brothers could not stand him because he was his father's favorite. We then see, as time passes, that Joseph begins to prophesy to his brother and say, One day you are all going to bow down before me. And this only enraged them more and made them more mad. We see that as more time passed, that they eventually got so angry at their brother that they plotted to kill him. And one day while they came along, they they took him, cast him into a pit. We see that as they cast him into this pit, a band of Ishmaelites came along the way. And instead of killing their brother, they took him out of that pit, sold him into slavery. We see that after he was sold into slavery, they take his coat of many colors they take a kid um, the blood of a lamb and they put their that coat of many colors underneath that blood and they take it to their father and say is this not your son's coat that you love so much and their father was so sad he started being so sorrowful and he rent his clothes and was so angry that his son had died but God made 
away. We then see as after this time comes that we know that Joseph was taken into Egypt. As he was taken into Egypt, he was sold into slavery to Potiphar. We see where he should have lived a terrible life as a slave, but instead God allowed him to see favor in the eyes of Potiphar. He raised from a point where he should have been so desolate and so down in despair, and he rose to be second in second highest in the house of Potiphar. We see that he found favor in the eyes of Potiphar. We then see as a little bit more time passes that Potiphar's wife tries to make advances onto Joseph. We then see as this happens that he runs away, but still she goes to Potiphar and tells him what he, she, he did. And Potiphar takes him and casts him into the prison. We then see as in this prison, God still made a way. We see that in this prison, that he meets the chief baker and the chief butler of Pharaoh. We see that they both had dreams and Joseph prophesies to them and he tells the butler, one day you're going to be restored to the right hand of the Pharaoh. But to the baker, he says, you will surely die. And we see that these things come to pass. But then all of a sudden, as one day, as the Pharaoh, he has a dream that no one in the land can tell him about. We say that everyone around him, he brings in all these false prophets, he brings in all these wise men, and all these people, and none of them can tell him what it means. But I'm glad that then, here comes the butler, and he said, I met a man in prison, and there was a way that God made, that when he should have been dead, he should have been dying in that prison, that he got raised out of that prison. He went to the Pharaoh, he prophesied to him, he told him, hey, you're going to have seven years of good harvest in the land of Egypt and then seven years of famine we see that since he was found in such favor in the eyes of the Pharaoh that he was made to be the right hand of Pharaoh one of the second highest in command of all of Egypt when he started as a slave he rented up as royalty in Egypt God made a way in the midst of it all we then see we know the story we know that he went down and he, his brothers, after this seven years of good harvest, that in the years of famine, that his brothers came to him. We know that he made it known to them that it was him. And he told them, come bring my father. I want to see him one more time. They bring Israel to him, J Jacob, and we see that they rejoice at this reunion. But then we arrive to Genesis chapter 50. And Israel dies. We see in this time that they were, all of Joseph's brothers began to be so afraid. They said, we did so many evil things to him. He's surely going to kill us. He's surely going to make us his servants. They get on their hands and knees and they plead to Joseph. And they say, please spare us. Please do not do anything bad to us. But then we see instead of anger and vengeance, we get Genesis 50 verse 20. It says, but as for you, ye meant evil unto me. But God meant it unto good. But God. I'm glad that when things in this world look bad, when everything around us is starting to weigh down on us, when the entire world says that we're so desolate and in such a dark place that there are two words that are stronger than any other words in the entire world. Those two words, but God can raise, make a fire rise up inside of you. I'm glad that those two words, each three letters long, found 43 times in your Bible, have power behind them so many times this world there are things that get us down and we feel like there's no way out but I can tell you the entire world may be on your back the devil says you can't God says that you can the devil says don't God says do the devil says there's no hope but God says you have a hope that the devil cannot take away the devil says you're defeated but God says you have victory the devil says things are too chaotic but God says there's a calm in your storm. The devil says you've gone too far from God's will. But God says you're never too far from my will. There's always an outstretched hand from God offering a but God moment. That, that phrase though, but God, it means that there is more to come. 
I'm glad that whenever the devil tries to talk to us, that he can't have the last word in the end. The devil will try everything he possibly can to get the last word in your situation. But I can tell you right now, no matter what happens, there's always a but God moment on the way in your situation. If you are a blood bought born again Christian of God, I can tell you right now, there's a but God moment on the way. That I can tell you right now, you may say, I'm too weak. I can't carry on much longer. But God says keep moving forward just a little longer. Hold on. The world says to give up. God says give it all you have. The world says to quit. God says to continue in the name of Jesus Christ. The world will try and turn you away. But God says keep going for my name. I'm glad that when the trials of this life weigh us down so much that there's a but God moment that comes along the way. So many times in our daily walk, so we look at the situation before us in our own eyes. And can I tell you, whenever you look at a situation through your own eyes, what you'll see is an impossible thing, something that you can't do on your own. You may say, that's too hard for me. I can never do that. No, I don't have the calling. I don't have what it takes to go and do that thing. But God will give you what you need in your situation. I'm glad that when trials are too hard, if we try and look at our trials through the eyes of Jesus Christ, there's no situation that is too hard for my God. I don't know what trial you're facing, but God knows what you're going through. I don't know what you're running from, but God knows how to handle it. I can tell you right now that if you start trusting God and facing the things that he's throwing at, that the devil's throwing at you, you will get a but God moment. Just hold on a little longer. Help's coming right on time. I'm glad that whenever I think of help coming right on time, I begin to think about Lazarus. And what I think about is that he was in that grave for four days. And what we know is that the Jews, they had a tradition that they believed that for three days, the soul lingered around that body after death. And after three days, that soul would depart into eternity. But we see that God showed up when it was impossible. He waited to the fourth day when everyone wrote it off, when everyone had no hope left. That's when God showed up and he said, hey, I know it may sound dark, but God made a moment right there and lifted them out of the grave. I'm glad that if you trust God and just hold on a little longer, you'll get a but God moment right when you need it most. So many times we see Christians don't want to hang on long enough. They get to the last quarter, so to say, and they write it all off. They look at the scoreboard and they say, there's no way we can make it back from this. But can I tell you that my God shows up right when you need it most, right when it looks like everything is too far gone. That's when my God will step onto the scene and he gives hope when there is no hope. My God has the final say and you will get your but God moment if you just trust in him. We see in this story how Joseph looked like he had no hope so many times. We first see he was sold into slavery and in slavery in those days, it was worse than death itself. What happened? was you were barely kept on the brink of life, barely kept alive just for labor. Can I tell you that the slavery back then was worse than death itself, but God made a way for him to rise from it all, but God made a way in the midst of such a hardship and such a trial. God made a way. We didn't see as, jo as Joseph was cast into prison, we see that he should have died in that prison, that he should have rotted he should have died and never made it out. But God showed up when it looked so dark and desolate. But God helped Joseph to rise from all that pain and sorrow and live a good life. We see that he, he faced so many trials and so many hardships. And this world wrote him off. Everyone around him wrote him off. His entire family wrote him off. But God 
made a way. I'm glad that when this life writes you off, when the church writes you off, when the person sitting next to you in your pew writes you off, when the person around you in, in your life writes you off, when your coworker, when your schoolmate, whoever it is writes you off, there's still a but God moment. It does not matter what happens in life. There's still a but God moment coming your way. I'm glad that's when God comes strolling along and says, hey, I know it looks bad, but I can fix this one. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. No matter what area you are in, if you are called by Jesus Christ, if you have Jesus Christ in your heart calling you to do something, I'm glad that there is still a but God moment for you. There are things in this life that the devil will try and work for evil, but God makes it turn around for his glory. That's when God will turn things around on its head and when you least expect it, and he makes a but God moment out of it. If you are a blood-bought, born-again Christian, hey, I'll say that one more time because it doesn't seem like we got too many. If you want to shout one more time, I would suggest right now. If you are a blood-bought, born-again Christian, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm glad that we all have but God moments. Satan says you may not make it out on your own, but God says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Satan says, no one is coming to help you with your problems. God says to cast all your cares upon me. Satan says the enemy has surrounded you. Just give up. But God says, I make thine enemies thy footstool. Satan says sickness has you. The dog Doctor says there's no hope, but God says by his stripes we are healed. Satan says you have too much sin, you'll die, you'll go to hell with me. But God said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Satan says death has its grip on you, you should be bitter, just give up. But God says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? God has the final say in every situation you're facing. I'm glad that as a blood-bought, born-again Christian, I've had a God moment. Every single one of us, if you are born again, if you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have had a but God moment. You say, what in the world are you talking about? Can I tell you that 2,000 years ago, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, went up to a cross. He spread out his arms, said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he took the nails that should have went into my hands. He took all the torments that should have came upon me, and he died and went to a grave for me. But... There was a but God moment even then. I'm glad that there was, you say there was only Jesus Christ in that grave. I don't believe that. There was two other people in that tomb with him. There was death and decay. I'm glad that on that first day, Satan walked into that tomb. He said, boys, how's it going? De death just kind of looked at him smugly. He said, oh, Satan, you don't know what's going on. He's never getting up out of this. He's gone. He's never going to get up out of this one. But then De Satan looks at Decay, and Decay says, hey, I've been trying all I can. I've been doing all that I can, but not a single hair on his head has begun to decompose. Not a single cell in his body has begun to decompose. Satan said, hey, you better pick it up. You got some work ahead of you that you still need to do. So he left and he came back that second day. We see Satan said, hey boys, how's it going? Death looked at him and he said, oh, he hasn't moved an inch. He's just another man. He's not getting up out of this. No one's ever gotten up again and he's not going to be the next one. I can tell you right now that, that, that Satan looked at him and he had a smile on his face 
and he thought, oh, I got him. But then he looked at Decay, and Decay said, well, I've been trying even harder than yesterday. But can I tell you that not a single thing has begun to decompose. Not a thing has begun to decay on him. He is just as perfect as when he laid, as when he walked on this earth, as when he lays in this tomb. He is just as perfect. Satan said, oh boy, you better pick it up or you're going to be in some big trouble. And then the third day, oh glory to God, hallelujah. And then the third, I'm glad that there was a but God moment on that third day. You say, what are you talking about? That's when Satan walked into that tomb. And what he saw was not Jesus Christ laying in that tomb. What he saw was death and decay hurled asunder. He saw a but God moment come to fruition right before his eyes. He said, what happened, boys? What happened? And death looked at him. He said, I tried everything that I could. I tried to hold him down. I did everything I knew. I made those chains so tight upon him. But God rose up out of that grave. But God rolled that tomb away. But God walked on out. But God came back to life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But that's not where that but God moment stopped. Because Satan looked at him and he said, you messed up big time. He said, you just wait until we get home. Come on, let's go. And death and decay just kind of looked at each other. And Satan turned and said, what's wrong, boys? You got the keys, don't you? Death looked at him and said, I had them. But God took them. Well, glory to God. But God walked out of that grave. He took the keys from death, hell, and the grave. And no more do I have to fear death anymore. Because I'm blood-bought. I'm born again. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose from that grave on that third day. I don't have to fear it anymore. Because as a four-year-old boy, I got on my knees and I accepted Jesus Christ into my life. And he said, hey, I know you're going to sin. I know you'll mess up, but God has a purpose for you. I'm glad that we all can have that bug dog moment as born again, saved Christians. We all can have that bug dog moment. We all can be called by Jesus Christ. I can tell you right now, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what trial it is that you're facing, but God has the answer. But God has a moment coming for you. There's a but God moment, a but God testimony that is coming your way. Can I tell you that there are but God testimonies? Those are the best testimonies that you will ever hear. Whenever they say, hey, I, I drank at one point, but God made me sober up. Hey, my God. Oh, glory. Hey, I had a sin-filled life, and I lived so terribly, but God turned my desires around to face God. Hey, I lived a terrible life. I shouldn't be where I am, but God made a way for me. I'm glad that we all can have that but God moment. As they come and get a song ready. I don't know what trials that you go through. I don't know what situation it is that you're facing. I don't know how hard it is for you. But God knows. I don't know what God has placed on your heart. I don't know what calling he has placed upon you. But God has a way and a purpose. You may say, I'm so terrified, I don't deserve it, but God knows what it is. God didn't make a mistake. He did it for a reason. And you can say, hey, I know that I wasn't deserving, but God still had a plan for me. You say, my life, it's a mess. I've strayed so far. I was saved at one time, but I turned away. But God can bring you back. 
You say, I don't even know Jesus in the first place. I never accepted him into my heart. I've sat in services and I've heard the preaching, but I've never gotten to the point where I've humbled myself to ask him into my heart. But God still loves you and wants you to accept him. But God still wants you to live for him. I don't know if you... If there's someone in here that was unsaved, maybe someone had a calling on their heart, something was happening in your life, maybe there wasn't anything happening, and sometime down the week, you just need, you're going to need a but God moment. Those are two powerful words that even when the devil is coming against you, you can say, hey, I know it's bad, but God still has a way out of this. I don't know what it is that we all go through in this life. Each and every one of us go through different things. But God can help you. If you come to an altar, they're open. And God can make a way for you. If you're unsaved and you need Jesus Christ, I want, I want you to know something. God loves you. God loves you so much that he went and died on a cross and took all the sin of the world on his back. Not just mine, not just Marcus's, not Jody's, not Liz's and, and Gavin's. All of our sin he took on our back, on his back and died. But until you accept that gift that he laid out for you, you can't get into that kingdom of heaven with him. And I think right now, if you knew that you didn't know Christ as your personal Savior, why don't you come to an altar and ask Him in your heart? Maybe you just strayed away just a little bit from Him and you don't know if you surely will go with Him. No man knoweth the hour, it says, of when we will either die or when Jesus comes back. And what I like to think is, if we had a timer sitting up on this stage that was counting down from one minute, it said 60, 59, 58, would you sit there in your sin? Would you sit there not knowing for sure that you're okay and know without a doubt that you're going to make it to heaven? Or would you run as fast as you could to that altar and lay yourself across it and say, God, please forgive me? Or would you sit there in your seat? Would you run to an altar and say, God, I don't want the last thing that I do on this earth to be disobedient to you. Or would you sit in that seat as that timer kept ticking down before Jesus Christ came back and called you into eternity? Do you know that you're going to be there? As they sing, and I invite you all to stand. As they sing, I invite you to come. Oh God, would you touch us all? Would you come? God has something on your heart. God's calling you. Would you come to him? You need a but God moment in your life. Come to an altar and get it from him. He wants to help you in that situation. He wants to give you that but God moment. But you have to come to the altar and get it from him. Oh, would you come and get that but God moment? God, would you touch us, Lord? Deserving, Someone needed a butt dog moment. I have a record you of me. your life. Soften your heart. Let them come to my sin. I know your dog oh, secrets us. that you would never tell. What makes you think you don't deserve a place with me God, in you. hell? Would you come? Well, I heard 
the old accuser And this was my reply You're right for John all those things I've done I sure deserve to die My righteousness is filthy rags My goodness is unclean There's only one thing I can say To what you said to me It's under the blood Oh, praise His dear name I'm not what I used to be My life has been changed Not shackled by sin and shame It's already gone I'm happy reminding Him it's under the blood Under the blood